This time it's five classic British scramblers of the 1960s. The 1960s was the period in which motocross, or scrambling as it was then, really came of age. It was also the era in which the British slowly were losing their grip or dominance of the sport. But they weren't quite done yet, and so here are five classic British scramblers of the 1960s. The Greaves Hawkston I thought I'd start with the Greaves because it's named after the motocross circuit where I now live. The circuit in question being of course Hawkston Park. The company was founded by Burt Greaves in 1952 and was funded by the fact that this company manufactured Invercars. The company's first machines were fitted with British Anzani engines but of course like everybody else they would soon move on to Villiers power units. But Greaves was never happy with the power from the Villiers units so he worked with Queen's University Belfast to produce a top end initially for the engine to make it more powerful, but then later a complete engine of their own. Incidentally, Queen's University Belfast, or QUB, would go on to have a considerable amount of success in Grand Prix racing in the 70s and 80s, and beyond in fact. In 1957 at Hawkston Park, works rider Brian Stonebridge would use his lightweight Villiers powered Greaves to win the 350 race and place second in the 500 race, despite giving away quite a lot of capacity. And to celebrate this, Greaves' next model would be called the Hawkston. The Greaves uses a 249cc single cylinder, piston ported induction, two stroke engine, designed by Villiers, of course, although the top end of the engine is of Greaves' own work. The Greaves frame features a trailing length front fork, although it's the main down tube of the frame which actually is very characteristic. It's a cast aluminium I beam from which the engine and the back of the frame hangs producing a frame which is both very lightweight and extremely rigid. And so effective was the 250 that Dave Bickers would use the machine to win the 1960 and 61 European Championships. The machine was extremely effective in the early 60s, but would be replaced by later machines with Greaves own engine, such as the Griffin. The BSA Victor. In the early days of the sport, BSA had had a considerable amount of success with their Gold Star models. But as the 50s turned into the 60s, it was increasingly obvious that the machine was becoming obsolete. BSA would replace the Gold Star with bikes based on their lightweight C15 range. But whilst these machines were never as powerful as the Gold Star, they were much lighter and more nimble, and so would be much more competitive against the lightweight two strokes then coming into dominance. The engine would gradually grow in size through 250 to 350, and eventually 441, and at the end of production, a full 500 cc's in the B50, although by that point even the bigger capacity and the use of a titanium frame on works bikes wasn't enough to keep the bike competitive. Head of BSA's competition department Brian Martin did a great deal of the work to develop the engine, taking it from 350 to 421 cc's in 1964 and by the end of the season he'd enlarge it out again to 441 cc's, which would allow works rider Jeff Smith to win that year's motocross world championship. Smith would repeat the feat again in 1965 with a dominant performance on the 441. Following on from his success, a Roadster version was developed in 1967, and this model would stay in production until 1967 and the introduction of the B50. Of course, by this point, the B50MX could not compete effectively against the European two-strokes, although 71 would also see the birth of Clues Competition Motorcycles, or CCM, and this Bolton-based company Founded by Alan Clues, would continue to be successful using the BSA B50 engine long after BSA itself had gone bankrupt. The Dot Demon Dot is one of those companies that many modern riders would never have heard of, but it was founded in Salford, Lancashire in 1903 and in 1906 built its first motorcycle. By the 1950s they were building machines both on and off road using Villiers engines. They would have success in both trials and motocross or scrambling at that time. The Dot Demon was introduced in 1962 and uses a then novel square section frame. The bike's front suspension is handled by Earl's type front forks and the engine is of course 
a Villiers two-stroke power unit, although fitted with a square finned, lightweight alloy top end, which has a capacity of 246 cc's and a boring stroke of 66 by 72. The bike was fitted with a four-speed gearbox and of course its drums front and back. And of course the dot was successful in both trials and scrambles, because although it gave away quite a lot in terms of top end power to BSA's mighty four strokes, it was considerably lighter at just 215 pounds. The Dot Demon would remain a popular clubber machine throughout the 1960s, and the company would survive even the loss of their main engine supplier in Villiers. And in fact the company survives through to today, supplying parts for its classic era machines, but also developing a new set of roadster bikes, which they unveiled at the 2022 Motorcycle Live Show. The Rickman Matisse In many ways Rickman frames are synonymous with Triumph, because that's the engine that seems to be most commonly fitted to their machines, although of course they can pretty much accept any engine you like. The company was founded by Derek and Don Rickman in 1960, because the two who were both scrambled racers were not happy at the standard of the chassis being offered by the mainstream manufacturers at that time, and so decided to build their own. So successful were they, that other riders came along and asked them to build chassis for those, and so the company was born. Finding that no major manufacturer would supply them with engines, they supplied the frames in kit form so that the customers could fit whatever engine they chose. And while Triumph Parallel Twins were perhaps the most popular, Steve McQueen only one for desert racing, it was not the only power unit fitted, and other units from BSA and Matchless would be commonly used, as well as two strokes from Bull Taco. And these frame kits would prove very popular, so much so that the company was able to branch out into making road racing frames for the likes of AGS 7Rs, but also they would make luggage for motorcycles too, including top boxes and panniers. And in the 70s they would build chassis kits for the likes of Honda CB750s and the Kawasaki Z1, whose frames were simply not up to the job if you wanted to go road racing or if you simply wanted a fast road bike. And also in 1970, 200 Interceptor Series 2 engines would be fitted into their road frames to create the now very collectible Rickman Interceptor. Around this period, Rickman would move from producing kits to full motorcycles, using 100, 125 and 250 power units supplied by Hodeka or Zundap, while Montessa power plants were also used on some 250s. But where did the Matisse name come from? Essentially, the Rickmans decided to use the name because it roughly translates as mongrel, referring to the mixture of engine and frames that the bike was created from. As for the company, while well, production of full motorcycles would end in 1975 after just a few years, the company would run on until the 1980s when the Rickman brothers would decide to retire and sell it onwards. Today, the Matisse name continues to be used, and the original Rickman design frame is still available in kit form if you want to build your own pre-65 classic scrambler, or you just want a really fast and stylish roadster of course. The AJS Stormer Now the AJS Stormer was of course born from the dark days of the collapse of associated motorcycles and the creation of Norton Villiers. The engine used was of course Villiers two-stroke star maker unit. This produces around 30 horsepower in 250 form, although larger versions would be created later. And by the time of the introduction of the Stormer, Norton Villiers were no longer supplying engines to other manufacturers, meaning that the engine was pretty much now unique to the AJS. And was at the time Villiers really only modern and competitive two-stroke power unit. The engine was a 247cc single cylinder piston ported two-stroke air-cooled unit with a boring stroke of 68 by 68. The first Stormer would be introduced in 1968 as a 250, although the engine would later be enlarged in 1970 to 370 cc's, and then later still in 1974 to 410 cc's. And although not a world championship winning bike, with its lightweight frame and effective Villiers engine, the machine would be successful as a clubman racer throughout the 1970s. What other bikes or groups of bikes would you like to see in future videos? Maybe you've got a bike we can use for a test ride. Either way, get in touch below. 
Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.